This video, we're going to learn to adjust Rainbird's 5000 rotor and also the 5000 Plus has the same adjustment mechanisms. So we're going to go through and adjust it. We're going to look at two different factors of adjustment, the arc and the radius, and then we're going to change the nozzle in it. Let's talk about the top of the head first. We have a little nub, a raised nub here that has an arrow on it, and that's where we're going to access the nozzle retention screw for adjusting the radius or even changing the nozzle. And we're going to insert the, the tip of our Rainbird adjustment tool down in there to access that screw. Just below it is a little blue tab, and that's something that we get from our nozzle tree to put in to indicate the size of the nozzle that we've installed in there just for a quick reference. To the right of that is a little slot, and we're going to take our Rainbird tool, put it down in there, turn it 90 degrees, and that's how we're going to pull it up out of its body. And we have one more place down here at the bottom at the 6 o'clock position, and that's how we're going to adjust the right limit on our arc. On the Rainbird heads, the left limit is fixed in the body, but we can adjust the right limit by using this gear here. And if we insert the tip of our Rainbird tool down in there, if we turn it clockwise, it's going to add to the arc or take it this way. If we turn it counterclockwise, it's going to subtract from the arc and bring it back this way. So let's talk about the adjustments before we turn the head on. On the Rainbird, like I just mentioned, the, the left limit is fixed. So as it turns back and forth, when it hits this left limit, we're going to have to change its orientation by changing the entire head. On normal rotors, that's the situation. But with the Rainbird 5000, we actually have another option that's unique to this head. It has a dry adjust slip clutch in the top of its head. While it's not running, you can turn this back and forth. Now, on most heads, you can do that as well, but we can change the left limit by turning the top of this head. If we want to bring this left limit to the right, we can continue to turn the top of that head and it pulls the entire adjusted arc this way. Or if we can turn it this way, if we want to turn that left limit back this way, it takes just a little bit of hand strength. You can turn it this way and it's pulling its entire adjusted arc this way. So we can dry adjust our left limit like that. And even then when you feel it kind of clicking in its normal arc turn, you can see the entire arc here. And we can go ahead and dry adjust this. I want to add a little bit more to the arc. So I'm going to turn this clockwise. So now we see our left limit and we can feel it turn to the right limit. So I've added some more to it and that's our dry adjust. So when we wet adjust this, we're going to have to grab a hold of the shaft and try to turn the entire head. The shaft is connected all the way down to the bottom. So you're turning literally the entire head when you're turning the shaft or we have another option to adjust this, right? We can dig up the top of the head. Now, under normal circumstances, it's going to be buried into the ground up to the head. Rarely is it that you see them on a stalk like this. Normally, they're going to be buried here, so we would have to dig up the top of the head, and then we can use our channel locks to grab the, sh to grab the body of the head here and turn it, right? And we can do our fine adjustment while it's running like that, or if we dig the top of the head up, you can actually take this loose here, take the, the bonnet off and then take this up and then move it over and set it back down into the gears. Now, that's not a very efficient way of doing it, but sometimes if there's no other adjustment, I mean, I've seen people glue these heads in and so then you're stuck and you don't have any back and forth adjustment and you have to take the gear set out and drop it back in at another place. But fortunately with the Rainbird we have our slip gear adjustment here. So let's turn it on and make our fine tune adjustments. We're going to set the left limit first and what we want to do is adjust use the top part while it's running pretty much all rotors have a little bit of adjustment room here on top to where you can uh, fast forward it basically 
But make no mistake, when you swing it around here, you're not going to see exactly where the limit is, where it's going to stop. So what I do is I, I turn it 75% of the way and then let the gears catch and then look at exactly where it stops in its travel and then make your fine tune adjustments based on that. Let's watch this happen. Okay, see this turns back and forth and you can kind of fast forward it to its limits. But like I said, I, I turn it about 75% of the way, let the gears catch again and carry it to its limit. And then when you either hear it click and stop and change direction, now we can make our fine tune adjustments by grabbing our shaft and turning it whichever direction we need that left limit to go, right? So once you get that set, now we can set our right limit by taking our tool and putting it here in the top of the head. Again, I want to see exactly where the gears take it. So let's put it here and let the gears catch and carry it to its limit. Okay, there we see it. I actually want to take it further this way. So we're going to turn this clockwise in here and now recheck it. And let's see how far it goes. Wonderful, that's where I needed it to be. So now let's change the radius or how far the stream is spraying out. And by doing this, we take the end of our Rainbird tool and put it down in that nub there until we feel it seat on top of the screw. And as you start to screw this nozzle retention screw down, at some point it's going to impede the flow of the water and start to flatten out the stream and shorten it at the same time. So here we see it flattened out. It's probably a good eight to 10 feet shorter in radius. And we can take it right back out. And when you're undoing the screw, don't take it so far out that this, the nozzle is going to pop out. The nozzle retention screw needs to grab the top of the nozzle a little bit to hold it in. Okay, let's change the nozzle here. We're gonna take our Rainbird tool, put it down into the slot here, and I've taken it off the fitting so we can see just a little bit more clearly what's going on. So we're gonna put this down in here, turn it 90 degrees and pull it up just enough to grab it. I'm gonna put it down in the nub here, the little raised part, and we're gonna withdraw our screw so it's not holding the nozzle in any longer. Okay, and then you can put your screwdriver down in here and pop this out. Now, also, we want to take out our little tab up here that shows the gallons per minute, the nozzle size. We're going to put us a new one in there. All right. And so we have our nozzle tree here, which has a variety of options for us to choose from, and they are the gallon per minute sizes, and you see them here on the tab. So what we had in there is a two gallon per minute. So let's put a three gallon per minute on there. We're gonna pull the nozzle off and the little tab. Go ahead and put our tab in there so we'll know exactly what's going on. Turn it 90 degrees, pull it up enough to grab it. And there are tools that you can get that'll hold this shaft up if you don't have enough hand strength to hold it up there. It does have a little bit of strength to that spring, but if you can't hold it up, get you one of those little tools to hold it there. And so we're just going to run our screw back in enough to hold the nozzle in. I always like to turn it to the left limit. And then we're going to turn it back on and then make our adjustments from there. 